Hello there. Welcome back to Print Shift. Today we're going to be adding a conveyor belt to our large belt ejector and talking about conveyor belt performance. How good is a conveyor belt? How does one measure its quality? That's something that I've been thinking about a lot. A way to objectively measure the performance of a conveyor belt designed for 3D printing. <laughs> now, I've been running my Print Shift Prusa Mini Machines for some time and I've become quite familiar with their failure modes. This is our most common. Most common on this scale and this machine is the belt deforming, bending, so this part curls up, with the part still attached. This causes the part to rock back and forth and detach during printing or catch the nozzle for a layer skip, which you can see pretty clearly on this guy. Print shift succeeds a lot more often than it fails. Prusa Mini alleviates these problems by putting the belt under tension. You can see our tensioning screw right here, up against the roller. Also, only use plaxes that don't warp much. It's barely an issue for flat, short parts in PLA or PET-G. You can see there's really no daylight between the two. Both about as flat as you can get. But for ABS parts, you have quite a bit more deflection. If you were trying to print more than one of these at a time, the first would deform the belt enough to ruin the second. And for those of you who caught Prusa Live number 37, this is the same bucket, but an entirely new set of parts. I see the same problems on other printers as well. My printer belt from back in the day, my very first belt printer. And even modern machines like the baby belt here. I'm still tuning this guy, but you can see the higher we get, the more the part is rocking back and forth. This is a Benchy being eaten by a shark. More updates coming on the belty baby belt. I know what it's called. We have a new Z drive to put in that should alleviate this. And I want to run some of my testing on it as well. Currently, when I want to print tall parts, I do the classic adding a large brim or a raft to the parts. And that works okay for now. But the whole point of print shift is to develop a better belt printer and hopefully better printers in general. More on that later. Let's check out this test mule. This printer is named Boxy Brown. I'm going to throw a capped on belt on him for a large belt ejector. Boxy Brown is a 300 millimeter cubic Cartesian Core XY belt printer. This is print shift scaled up. A wider belt clearly, but more importantly, we're using beefier rollers on, what you see in there, 20 millimeter extrusion for a very stiff rod and a frame that can take as much tension as we can give it. This is the tensioner here, industrial hardware. And this is strictly for testing. There's no need for a 5 16 in shaft here. We're not putting thousands of pounds on it, but we are using a spring so we can actually measure the force. It takes 20 kilograms of force to compress this spring all the way. Can't quite do it one-handed. And we have two of those, so we'll be putting up to 40 kilograms of force on the bed before we run out of spring tension and can't tell you what the tension is. The bed itself here is a six millimeter slab of aluminum tooling plate held in place only by gravity. So later when we're putting the belt on, you can actually take the rollers off and slide the belt on a continuous belt from the side. Or what we're going to do is build the belt in place just because a little easier. Basically, I'm using Boxy Brown here to test belt technology that can be applied to a Voron or say a Prusa XL. Print Shift XL, perhaps? Like and subscribe and you'll eventually see that right here. You can also support PrintShift at patreon.com slash printshift. Benefits there include early access, support via Discord, and your name down below. Thank you to all of my current supporters. Currently, all the proceeds go towards buying parts. I've got a previous video on bringing the machine up to modern standards using the Duet Electronics and the Duet Toolboard, which I gotta say is a glorious upgrade. Only four wires connecting up my extruder. And it's been working beautifully. Check the playlist if you're interested in that. The only thing I've done since is the rear roller is wrapped in heat shrink to give it better grip on the belt. That doesn't work. I might add some little rubber on there, but I want to make sure it's a solid roller so there's no deviation in the roller. The major upgrade of this machine over the Prusa Mini are these stepper motors driving the belt. And the stepper motors are controlled by the Dual Electronics. These two guys. Why that's important, but whatever. That means I can move the belt precisely, so I can actually use the XYZ axes to print on an angled plane, and use the belt as a fourth axis to move my part out slowly and make parts larger than the printer. 
Now the software for that doesn't exist, but if we get more people building these machines, hopefully more people will be interested in working on that. Right, I'm gonna get the camera fixed in place. So we can hopefully watch the belt install reasonably. That's pretty good. So belt forming. In order to do this install, you need a belt. I'm going to stick with my two millimeter capped on film. Same thing I'm using on the Prusa Mini. You need some really good, strong adhesive pet tape. Got this off of McMaster. Same stuff on the Mini again. And to make life easier, I'm using some painter's tape to hold the belt in place until I can cut it. Because I'm going to cut this in place on my machine and because Boxy Brown has been with me for quite some time, and I'm going to throw a protector on the bed so I don't cut into my fancy aluminum tooling plate. The only other tool you need is a knife. I note that Milwaukee doesn't sponsor any 3D printing channels. Just saying. So then move all the crap off the belt that you just put on the belt. I'm going to line up the belt edges and tape it in place. Just tack it in place using the blue Basically, we need to get it oriented so that we have some chance of making a straight cut on this. Line up both edges. Now, I've been a little surprised with print shift that the quality and the straightness of your belt is not as important as I was expecting. Even on a machine that small, I haven't had issues of belt tracking or anything else. Not nearly used to working inside this machine because it's really the first time. I figured it was big enough it wouldn't be a trouble, but... So there we're lined up, we have a decent amount of flex. I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of tension on it. So the blue tape is not sticking very well at all, which is what it's designed to do. All right, so lesson learned. Cutting the belt in place is much easier on the Prusa Mini, which is admittedly how I normally do it, just because, you know, laziness. It's okay. However, put this guy back on. Certainly good enough for testing our belt object. And I'm only just remembering that I can actually make my life a lot easier. <laughs> there we go. I was hoping to keep the belt close to the camera so you could see better, but I gotta get my hands in on those. Yeah. Next time, I'm gonna build the belt off the printer and then install it, but... So we got tape in underneath. I'm going to attach this a little bit better. So I'm going to tension the other side of the belt to get this locked into place. There we go. Gap just a little wider than we'd like, but should work out well enough. And the whole idea here is to test. My plan is to put a lot of tension on this belt, more so than I'm going to do today. Down the line, I have stiffer springs on order. Again, thank you, patrons. So we can test how far we can go. All right, you guys see the tensioners? So in order to tension the belt, two of these threaded rods, or two of these eye bolts, I'm pulling it either direction. And we have the crown roller that should keep the belt tracking and try to alleviate any pillowing in the center of the bed. The reason I'm using springs is that I can actually measure the tension between them. So I can put the same tension on both sides. The force that spring apprise is linear with its length. Tighten one almost all the way. Get the other one to a similar spot. And we're gonna back off and see how well we can roll the belt before we worry about going much further. Home the entire machine. You guys in the way? Technically no. Almost like I did that on purpose. I'm going to increase the tension on the bed while rolling it. Make sure we have space in our steppers. And I vastly underestimated the amount of force that 20 kilograms on the springs would be providing. This is not even close. So that has already maxed out 20 kilograms of force on the belt. And we're getting there. But this is just about the same tension we have on the Mini. And I was hoping to do quite a bit better than that. We are getting... 
nice flat printable area, but I don't think we'll be able to do much in the way of testing our printed objects without a higher force bet. So, thanks to the Patreons. Already got springs in the mail because I kind of thought this was a problem when I was workshopping this video. But let us get a print going. And we'll talk a little bit about what we're printing and how we're going to actually measure the belt tension. So what are we printing? This. This is what I'm using as a belt deflection tester. Part with a good, wide, solid base, 50 millimeters as it's labeled. That is 50 millimeters tall to this notch. Well, he's gone forever. To this notch between two balls at the top. The idea here is to hook a digital force gauge to that while it's on your belt and your belt is still hot and see how much force it takes to deflect the belt by one millimeter here. And that should give us a decent measure of how flat your belt is and how flat the belt can maintain itself during a print. So we're going to be printing another one of these on the belt and have it sit there. We'll come back and give it a test. I'll put this design up on prusaprinters.org or whatever its new name will be. I will use it to test belt printers going forwards. I wanted to introduce the part now in order to collect feedback on its utility. Partly through my testing, but if any of you makers watching have thoughts on it, please do leave a comment. I'll come back when the print is done and do a quick initial test just to, you know, validate testing methods. Alright, so this object is designed to be used with a digital force gauge. This is a 500 gram model, so it's actually only measuring down to hundreds of a kilogram. Now, we're not trying to measure belt adhesion. This is assuming that your object is sticking to the bed well. What I want to measure is the belt's tendency to deflect under load. Now, this belt, under 20 kilogram spring force, don't think it's going to do terribly well, but let's take a look and see what's required to move the bed out a millimeter. So, right about there. So looks like we get a little deflection, about 0.4. Yeah, no. Now we're coming loose from the bed. About. This guy's starting to work itself loose. Which. Still. That's pretty good. Better than expected. And we'll try this again with higher springs, different tensions. And I'd like any feedback you have on this particular object. She'll be up on Prusa Printers when this video goes live. Link down below. And we'll be using it to test the attention on other belts as well. Thanks for watching. Happy printing. <laughs>